You're listening to Double Tap, your daily accessible technology show. Now, here's your hosts, Stephen Scott and Sean Priest. Oh, hello, Sean Priest. <laughs> wow. That was very seductive, Stephen Scott. Oh, hello. Seductive? Yes, wow. it was. That was my tired voice. Oh, mm. well, I oh. liked it for a Tuesday. Well done, you. How are you? I'll see what Mrs. S thinks of that one. Um, I mean, <laughs> clearly not much, to be perfectly honest, because I use that voice most days and I usually just get a <laughs> yeah. out of it. So, uh, anyway, Welcome yes, to married life. Yeah, anyway, absolutely. carry on. Welcome to Double Tap, your uh, daily dive into the minds of two silly people. Thank you. Well done. Um, very tame. Yes. I have been playing with iOS 18 most of the night. Who hasn't, Stephen Scott? Who hasn't? It's wonderful. Actually, do you know what? I, I went on to... This is this is actually very shocking. Very shocking. I think, yeah. Breaking, breaking news. Yeah. Breaking yes. news. This does warrant breaking news because uh, I read the Apple Viz article. That's the, the power of oh. threatening to shut down a website uh, for me. Uh, I read... The Apple Viz bug report yes. on iOS 18 and iPad OS 18 as well. Oh, I haven't um, looked at it yet. So, should yeah, we so be... that's an absolute disgrace, Sean Priest, because <laughs> you know, these people have, have worked so hard and yes, we haven't appreciated them enough. So, I, I would have checked it out straight after I installed iOS 18 like I, yeah, an idiot. I, I did exactly the same thing. No, I did. I, I read it. <sighs> I, I read it on the device running iOS 18, which is probably not the smartest yes. move. Thank you, um, Apple Viz team, by the way. An amazing yes. job, I'm sure. Is there any show-stopping bugs in there I should have known? Well, that was the interesting bit. So it says, this is a relatively low-risk update. I was quite surprised oh, to read that. Now, okay. of course, early days. So, you know, people will find bugs, and there are a few in there. Um, no major showstoppers. It seems, though, if you want to use the Photos app, <laughs> um, then you may have some issues because it's full of unlabeled buttons. Oh, that's very disappointing. I've yeah. got to say... I have always found the Photos app to be confusing for me. I've never, oh, totally. quite, yeah. never quite figured it out. And please, for the love of Double Tap, why can't <gasps> we label or name the photos? Uh, you can. You can do the accessible, you know, what is it, three finger, uh, two finger, yeah, yeah, triple yeah. tap and hold to label. Yeah, yeah. But why is it not just in their default? I mean, as a mainstream feature that you can name your photos. Yeah, no, I don't understand that. And they always end up, you know, it's like just the date or a place, and that gives you a sense. But, you know, all you're doing is kind of working on the basis of, I took a photograph near that place I once was. Yeah. Hmm, maybe it's that one I'll send. And then you find you're sending a picture of a spot that you took a picture <laughs> of to send to someone to check if this was something I should be concerned about, rather than a picture of you and your family. Yes. Oh, well, makes it more interesting. It does. Um, but no, look, I, I've got to say, so far, so good. Uh, there are a couple of things. Focus is a bit, it's a bit jumpy. Um, I've noticed this, but then is I that noticed new? that at the tail end of iOS 17 <laughs> as well, and 16 and 15 and 14. So yeah, okay, it's a fairly common thing. i tell you um, what I've noticed, and I don't know if they've reported it. I'm sure they have. The control center is very janky. Oh, interesting. Okay. I know there was a couple of issues I read about with um, moving things around, certain, yes. like if you wanted to move around or, or move something in the control center, it wouldn't actually drop it where it would tell you it had dropped it where you wanted it to go. Like if you moved something around, but it doesn't, it doesn't do it. That's the problem. It's it actually isn't you. moving it. It's just pretending. It's just, yeah, I've done it. Yeah. It's a bit like, you know, asking your kids to do something for you. Yeah, mom, done <laughs> it. Done. No, you haven't. Yeah, I, I find iOS the... 18 is a really child. It's in its, it's in its 18th year now. And, uh, you know, clearly it's <laughs> acting like one. Yeah. The, the drag and drop through the rotor, which I use all the time, by the way, for moving icons around into folders mm. on the home screen, um, I find that to be, yeah, slightly unreliable. But the drag yeah. and, you know, if you double tap and hold an icon and drag it around, I notice that still works perfectly fine. So, um, yeah, it's just these little annoyances, which I'm sure, you know, in the point one release will be fixed, or at least I hope well, so. Exactly. And, you know, that's the thing. It feels like there aren't as many bugs to, to squash this time around. And there are a number of bugs from iOS 17 that have been fixed as well. Again, you know, I'm not going to go through everything. You can read it all on the app of his article. It's well worth checking out. We'll link to it in the show notes so you can keep an eye on it. It's also great because other people can contribute to that as well. And it does say in the article, you know, we're kind of just giving you a top level guide here. You know, check the comments keep following all of that so that you can get a sense of what's good, what's bad. If you are nervous about it, just don't update just now. There's no rush to update. Uh, if your phone is set to auto-update, then you might want to turn that off. 
Um, I mean, I'm starting to do that now with apps as well. I'm just not having them auto update because, you know, just disasters strike, um, you know, and suddenly you have this fantastic app that is now no longer accessible. I've got to say, though, you know, on the inaccessible, accessible app front, and this sounds a bit strange, I know, but... Yes, it did. I, I updated my I, Apple TV to iOS, or to tvOS 18 uh, this morning, and I, I don't know what major differences there are. Normally, you get a, a splash sheet that comes up at the beginning that kind of runs you through some new features, but nothing happened. Nothing came up at all. So I'm guessing most of it is just background updates, no major changes. Um, VoiceOver uh, came back. Daniel was my voice. I was very annoyed. Same with my phone, by the way. I couldn't find Eloquence last night. I sent you a message late night saying, are you kidding me? Where Furious, is he was. my eloquence? I couldn't find it. Yes. Could not find it. I searched for it in the little, mm-hmm. little search box and I, I typed in eloc. Yeah. Because I, I don't know how to spell the rest no, of it. No, obviously so that's why you didn't find it. L-O-Q. Well, that's the start of it, isn't it? I have no idea. I just went to settings, you know, accessibility, voiceover, speech, and then double tapped on couldn't the primary find it. voice. Fake and news. there was eloquence first Fake thing news. almost in the list. So Yeah. Well, it was there this morning. And yeah. That's because you did something. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, that's an interesting it's like thing. Beetlejuice. You've got to see it three times, then <laughs> it'll show up. <laughs> it's I, I can't quite get my head around the the way the voices work in iOS. I would love for someone to explain this to me. I've heard different explanations that I don't quite believe 100%. But there's no denying that those voices are dynamic. They seem to update themselves on the fly. Mm. They're not hard-baked into the operating system, it seems. Sometimes they'll start to pre um, uh, mispronounce, I should say, <laughs> ironically enough, mispronounce <laughs> words and then suddenly fix themselves. And I did see on Facebook and other social media platforms a lot of people complaining, my speech is finished after, uh, gone away after updating, or I'm now getting static yeah. in certain words. The common factor I noticed in all those was they were using Siri voices. If you switch back to a normal, well, any other voice, it seems, uh, it fixes the problem and then just try switching back to Siri. But again, why would that be? I, I can't, can't quite understand it. I'm kind of getting a bit annoyed by the whole Siri voice thing, to be honest, because I, I can never get mine to stick. They always seem to change back. So, you know, whenever I choose whatever voice I choose, whatever Siri voice it is, usually Siri voice 4, I think it is, which is like an English Yorkshire, well, the, under the English UK. Yes. Um, there's different ones, and it's like a, a Yorkshire kind of voice, and I, I really like her voice. Uh, but every time I choose it, it just goes away again, and I just get fed up with it. So I actually went back to Eloquence before, um, and interestingly with the Apple TV, the same thing happened. So it went from uh, Siri voice that it was on to Daniel. Oh, no, I tell a lie. It was on Eloquence. I beg your pardon. It was on Eloquence. It had gone back to Daniel, and again, the same thing. I thought, right, well, here we go. I need to go find Eloquence again. Yeah. And just as I was doing it, Eloquence came back. Thought, oh, that's cool. So it just came back by itself, and that was good. Anyway, I want to mention this inaccessible, accessible app that I've found. Oh, yeah, sorry. Tangent. Um, that was my fault be- this time. Well, th- this is interesting. So you know I've been talking a lot about Sky Television in the UK, and I've been ranting a lot about the fact that audio description is not available on any of the content on demand. Um, and this has been an ongoing issue for, for many years. Yes. Sky say it's coming. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, you know, so is the rapture, right? I mean, it feels like one's <laughs> going to get here first, and I don't really know which one I want first um, <sighs> at this stage. So, you know, it feels like um, it's never coming. But uh, this morning I did go into what's called the Sky Go app, which is their own app for accessing Sky Television outside of, a, of, of their system. So, like, you know, on a mobile or an iPad and on an Apple TV, you can still access your Sky TV account. You can watch the channels. You can watch the... The programs you're already subscribing to, you can access the whole thing via the Sky Go app. Sounds and great. It, brilliant. Uh, the app is almost, I would say, 100% accessible. It is brilliant. It was, I would say, about 60, maybe 50% accessible before. Yeah. Last time I tried it a while back. Logged in this morning and I was so impressed. Every single program read out, every single item, every single box, every button, everything was there. It was all labeled, all beautiful. And I thought this is, that honestly, was possibly the best television experience I'd had in a long time. Going through TV channels, you know, choosing things to watch through the electronic program guide. Oh, it's the uh, dream. Everything. Every single We've bit. We've made it, all brothers using, and sisters. All using the eloquence <laughs> voice. I mean, I was in heaven. <laughs> yes. And then I go into the programs. And of course, there's no mention of audio description at all. And hence why I call it the inaccessible accessible app. Because it is 
100% almost, I'm saying almost 100% because I'm sure someone will find something with it, but I didn't find any <sighs> issues. And I've searched around quite a lot. I mean, I've got to say, I would even go so far to say that, you know, the, the, it excelled in some areas, even with the layout, even with what it was speaking. I, I hate to say this, but I fear a lot of that is by chance. Oh, yeah. Who cares? Why? I mean, the fact is, we well, can I, now... No I, no, I do care why, because the problem is the next update could kill it. Well, that's the problem. Yeah, that's so the true. next update could kill it. I'd rather know someone was actually deliberately making this happen in this way <laughs> so that we can have some guarantees that will be like that going forward. But, you know, accessibility by chance breath. is dangerous mm -hmm. because you, you, can, you could end up paying money for a service and then suddenly one update later, the whole thing's gone. So, you know, I, th I think there's a new category of apps you should have called accessibility by chance. And I think I would put this into it. Accidentally accessible. But, yeah. I mean, even on purpose, accessibility can still mm. be oh, yeah, yeah. lost Absolutely. in no, a 100%, uh, update. 100%. But I was impressed by that. But then, of course, no audio description. I'm not going to go on about it all day because I feel I talk about it all the time. But no, 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 no. It, it that's, just no, annoys no, me. No, it's perfectly... I mean, all that work. Now we can access inaccessible content because they've yeah, taken away right. and not only that haven't they made it worse in that the audio description from the live channels has disappeared where it was there that's before right. in the app and there's no option at all in the app to turn it on only option under any kind of accessibility setting and there's no settings at all it's just for subtitles mm. now of course i have nothing against subtitles nothing against captions not of course nothing against any of that but i don't understand why they can do that but they can't especially in a digital platform you know netflix Disney, uh, Apple mm -hmm. TV, just name any app you can think of. that They've done it, mostly, well, not is, all of them, but mostly they've, oh, they've all done it. They've all added audio-described versions. And again, I'll say it one more time, and I'm never going to say it again, at least for a week. <laughs> all the work is done. We're not asking yeah. you to do anything that you haven't already done. You've already built, you've already made the content. You've paid for the audio describers to write the scripts and do the voices. You've done all the hard work. Just make it available. Yeah. I mean, how hard is this? Like it was before the update. Yeah. I've got to say, though, right, talking about turning off automatic updates so you don't lose accessibility, don't you think it's about time Apple introduced a rollback feature? You know what? This version mm. isn't working for me. Let me roll back to the previous version. That's I don't understand why that isn't allowed because that would solve so many problems. You wouldn't have this fear of updating and being, you know, losing access to that app. Yeah, well, I suppose the Sonos example kind of is the, yes. maybe the exception to the rule on that. I don't know, because it was a, a whole new rewrite, wasn't it? So if you had rolled back, nothing would have worked because it wasn't it was intended that that app would replace and therefore function. I mean, like, for example, with the Sonos Ace headphones, yes. you had to have that update, although they wouldn't work. So th there are good reasons why they maybe don't. Yeah, I'm that sorry. Happen, that but, was just incredibly bad planning and forethought yeah. to to put a, firstly a deadline. This app has to be out on this date. I mean, I'm assuming that's to support the release of the Ace headphones. Mm. Um, but then to just totally drop the ball on the app development. So I've got no sympathy from that. Sorry. Uh, listen, I, 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 well, so much to talk about, but I want to mention this guy because uh, there is a wonderful guy who we both know. Uh, his name is Chris McCausland. And uh, despite my best efforts here, I can't get this thing that I wanted to play to play. <laughs> so forget it. Um, uh, but I, <laughs> do you want me to do the uh, theme tune? I think, well, we just we just sing it ourselves. Yes. Will that, will that mean more sense? Because honestly, I, hang on, we'll try one more time. No, it's all gone quiet, which uh, makes me rather, makes me rather nervous <laughs> that it's doing that. <laughs> oh, oh yes. The rest of the show could be silent. <laughs> hang on. Hey! Oh dear. Da 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 Thank you. He can identify for himself. Uh, <laughs> but he is uh, currently taking part in the UK's Strictly Come Dancing, or Dancing with the Stars, I think, as it's known in America. Um, is it? And Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, uh, it's a different name. Okay. They don't call it Strictly Come Dancing because I don't think they know what that means. Okay, fair enough. Because over here, there was already, the show was originally called Come Dancing. That was the original show. Yes. And I don't know why they put the word Strictly in front of it, but they did, and the Americans didn't know what that was, so they called it Dancing with the Stars because there were stars that were dancing, and I guess it makes sense. Well done. Um, 
Anyway, no, that's that's over with, thank goodness. Uh, yeah, Chris McCausland, blind comedian, he is starring in the show, and I just wanted to lend our support to him. I mean, in no way is this meaningful, uh, useful, or anything, but I just wanted to say from two blind guys to another, good for you. You're yes. representing. You're well done, representing the world of blind people. Blind ballroom dancers. Blind God ballroom bless dancers. you, Chris. You're tra trailblazing over there. <laughs> and Although I saw you on that, Blankety Blank as well the other day, which is a British institution of game shows. Very good as well. Oh, and would I lie to you as well, obviously. Oh, yes, he's always. That as well. yes. Um, but yeah, Chris, uh, he, he's a regular listener to the show, so I know he'll be in amongst um, <sighs> pirouetting or balleting. Yes. Or, am I making up words? Probably. Um but in amongst all that, he is uh, he is doing a fantastic job, and he uh, he came up with some cr cracking lines. So funny on the show, yeah. He's he's just so good, so so good. Um, listen, I had a few technical issues with my system here, so we'll hopefully get through the emails today. But before I get to the emails, uh -oh. um, I'm saying that because we may need to preempt a little bit here. Yes. Um, so uh, I want to mention the AirPods Four because the reviews have just come out, and they are really good. They are really good. Apparently, they are fitting much better than the AirPods 3. I didn't realise there was a huge difference in design to these. Smaller, apparently, and that can yeah. make all the difference because you can get closer to, actually, the ear canal. I'm guessing. I don't know. I haven't tried them. And these are open, so they just sit on your ear. They don't go in your ear like the AirPods Pro, so there's a stark difference between the two. Yes. Of the AirPods 4, though, there are two varieties, and this is what may confuse some people, but I think there's some reasons why you might want to spend the extra you know, $50 if you're in the US or whatever it is in, the, in Canada or the UK, you know, there's a there's difference in price because... 50 whatever. You're saying, yeah, yeah, you've got like a... <laughs> you've, got, you've got like a kind of a, a... I'd say a stark difference between the two. The AirPods 4, the basic version, as they're kind of being touted as, you know, are just earbuds, right? They're just wireless earbuds and they're good wireless earbuds. So, you know, for someone who's in a budget... This is the budget pair of AirPods 4. Now, they will never tell you that the budget because Apple don't do budget, but that is exactly what this is for. However, if you spend a little bit more, you'll get uh, a couple of features I think are really good. You get active noise cancellation, which, is that the first time we've seen this on open yes. earbuds like this? Yeah, it's the first time I've seen it ever on open. Uh, man, I haven't tried every earbud, but yeah, it's the first time because usually... It's called passive noise cancellation when it's something that actually blocks your ear canal anyway, like putting your fingers mm. in your ears. That's passive. It just blocks out noise because of how you're doing it. Yeah. Um, but active is using the microphones on the headphones and actually trying to cancel out the noise that it's getting uh, by algorithms. Very, very technical. But usually that works the same way, as in it's got to block the ear canal to be effective, really. So uh, this must be really good. I'm, I'm really interested to hear what people think about that noise cancellation. Well, looking at the reviews on, on CNET and The Verge, uh, most people seem to be very um, happy with it. Now, of course, I have seen both sides of the scale. Some people saying this is absolutely incredible, best thing you've ever seen, and people saying it's absolutely worthless. Um, I, I think it's going to depend a lot on where you live. I mean, if you live in New York City, for example, uh, I think your your mileage may vary in terms of the amount of active noise cancellation that actually happens. Uh, and I did watch a review of someone in New York saying, "Yeah, okay, it does dull the noise, but it's not it's not cutting everything out. That's not really how far it goes. It will it will cut out an an amount of noise." The surprise was though that it did at all. I think. That was the surprise I was getting from the, re the reviews, was that it actually did. And they, and to compare, someone said, well, compared to the AirPods Pro 2s, you're looking at about 50% of noise reduction compared to the AirPods Pro 2. Now, if you're in a busy city, that could be quite useful, you know, because it is dulling the noise. I, I suppose the question is, mm. are you still able to hear what you're listening to? Because that, I think, is the big problem. I found this with the AirPods 3. I would get on a train and I could barely hear what was actually coming out yes. of the AirPods into yes. my ears. Yeah. And they're right next to my ears because there was so much noise around me. So if that's able to dull that noise in the background down a little bit, by 50%, say, then that could be useful. So perhaps this is more about just hearing your content better, dulling that background noise, and not actually about closing you off and isolating you entirely. Well, it depends what your expectation is of noise cancellation. I mean, for anyone who hasn't used it at all before, um, it doesn't it doesn't just bring a carpet down over your ears and just, you know, that's it. You don't hear anything else but what's playing through. 
Um, it's great for the example of an airplane is fantastic. Cutting that engine noise out, the background chatter, which always makes me a little bit anxious, all that background in, indistinguishable chatter that you get. Cutting that out is really nice. And I think Apple actually do it really well. I've used the AirPods Pro, not twos, but the first ones. And um, the way that it, it does feel like someone's just blocking your ears, um, but does it really nicely. But you can still hear people, you know, if someone does start talking to you, you will, that will break through. So, oh, I mean, listen, the AirPods Pro 2s are incredible. Yeah. And if you've got the money, they are worth it. However, a lot of people don't like earbuds pushed into their ears like that. No. And that's the problem. So a lot of people don't like that. So it gives somebody the option to have that open ear design. I'd love to try these. I don't know if I'd buy them because I've just had to rebuy the AirPods Pro 2s. Oh, Thanks yeah. to uh, you know who. <laughs> How did that yeah. work out for you? Who who brought them to you, Stephen Scott? Oh, I don't, I don't start me on this. Honestly, it's so ridiculous. I feel every day is is dog. What has my dog swallowed or tried to swallow today? Oh, that was hilarious. Um, so yesterday, sitting in the house, just got the package through the door. So I put the package on a little table. Mistake number one. I go into the kitchen to get something. I come back out, and there is the package being dragged across the floor by the dog. More AirPods. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's fine. More <laughs> meals have arrived. Oh. Thank you so much. The delicacies, these AirPods Pro. Uh, my neighbour and I were having a discussion about this last night, and we were actually discussing the merits of uh, how uh, how fulfilling these are as a, as a treat, as a snack. Yeah. It's all about tea, understand. Think. Yeah, I couldn't quite understand why we were having this discussion, um, but there you go. I suppose if you like cashew nuts or uh, Did your you know, hard nuts. Did his AirPods? Who knows? Uh, no, um, well, you know, you don't want to ask, right? <laughs> I don't think I, want, I, don't, I don't have that kind of relationship with those people, right? So I don't know. I think it is purely down to the new design of the AirPod 4s, why the active noise cancellation, firstly, is there in the first place, but secondly, seems to work quite well according to the reviews. Yeah. I think because, as I said, they are on air, don't go in the ear canal, but I think they are going to be closer to the ear canal and block out any ambient noise anyway. So. Uh, yeah, very nice. It's always nice to have an option. But hang on. Why go for the active noise cancellations over the more, we're going to say, affordable option? What else is there? Yes, you're right. There is another thing I nearly forgot to tell yes. you. Um, thank you, Sean. <laughs> this should be quite know. useful in your old age. Um, so uh, I think your memory's coming back as well, which is wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, the other thing is, of course, it has the, uh, well, two things, actually. It's got the MagSafe uh, charging functionality, which is, okay, fine, whatever. Um and of course, it's got the USB charging, as does the original or the, the the basic version. But it also has a speaker in the case, which the basic one doesn't have. So if you're using Find My to locate them near your dog, say, um, then you will be able to hear as you uh, move around. It doesn't have the U1 chip inside like the AirPods Pro 2 does. So you can't precisely locate them in the same way, hence why it has the little speaker in there with the little beeper as well. So it will guide you close to them hmm. and the speaker will essentially pick up the slack and, and help you find beep, them. Beep, so, beep, 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 yeah. beep. That's actually become really useful to me. And I think you know, that's one of those accessibility features that you know you don't necessarily think of as an accessibility feature, but it is. Okay, so we are stating it's a double tap recommendation that the active noise cancellation AirPod 4s <laughs> are yes. the blind earbuds. Yeah, AirPods Pro 2, I'd say, are the blind earbuds. But, you know, it's Price your budget, right? Um, Double so the price. Two, two four nine, isn't it in you in Canada for the uh, ones with the ANC with the active noise cancellation? Yes. And memory tells me it's three three nine in Canada for the. But I could be totally wrong. I think that's right. Okay. From memory, from All my right. notes. So uh, yeah, Check it, it is. I mean, you know, it is a considered purchase. They always are, especially when your dog eats them. They are even more considered. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, just a quick thing as well, by the way. Uh, did you notice uh, Amazon Prime Day announced? Or Prime Days? Or Prime Event, I think it's now called? Do you know what? I hate to say it, I think I'm falling out of love with you, Amazon. Because I I, <gasps> I don't pay much attention to that anymore. Mm, I, I, I've got to say, I, I read it this morning. 8th and 9th of October is the event, uh, which of course involves a week of lead up and, you know, a week of trying to get rid of everything else in the warehouse <laughs> yes. uh, the following week. Um, I mean, it does feel a little bit like they're doing a clear out. It feels like Stevens opened his loft to the masses <laughs> and said, here's everything with 50% off. 
or not, as the case may be. Some slightly used AirPod uh, Pro 2s. If any any dogs out there that perhaps need uh, some AirPods, <laughs> I I can help you here. I can totally help you. Look, uh, right, I, look let's get let's get to some emails because okay. honestly, look, we, we could talk all day, and I, I know yes, we could. Because we do. I've got about a million things we could talk about, but I want to get into uh, some of the emails we've been getting. We're going to kick off with this one. Hello, guys. This is in reference to Negative Julian's voicemail about Gemini and Google Calendar at the Google 9 event Google announced. Mm. They were making personal information management extensions available for Gemini, including calendar and tasks and some other things. I could have sworn I heard them say it would be available before the end of the year. So if that is true, help will be on the way soon. Hang in there. Take care. Will in Pennsylvania. Thank you, Will. Will in Pennsylvania. Do you know Greg? Of course. They must. Every surely. blind person knows every other blind person in the locale. Well, it's funny, right? Because I mentioned Chris McCausland earlier, mm. and someone said to me the other day, Oh, do you know Chris? And I said, Well, I don't know him personally, yes. but he does listen to the show. Oh, so you do know him then? I'm like, Yeah. No. I said, yeah, well, I know of him, of course. But I'm, and then I'm like, Well, so do you. So what are you talking about? You oh, know, I you know, know him, him as well as I do. Uh, every time he's on telly, I always say, Yeah, I know him. Hi, Chris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Best mates. Do you wave at him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, let's move on to Suji, who's got some comments for us. Hey, just wanted to share my take on the heartbreaking news about the Orcam closure. I just got the Orcam read last year. No grants, just fundraised, and I use it regularly. I do have an iPhone 15 Pro as well as an Android phone, both of which have Seeing AI and Be My Eyes installed, but I still prefer using the Orcam. This may be a regional thing, but in my country, the internet is very unstable, rendering all apps that require internet access to function properly unusable. Throw in the fact that if I was to simply remove my phone from my pocket, it might get stolen within the next 15 seconds. Or if screen readers read out my passcode, well, the OrCam is a device that people wouldn't really know what to do with here. I've also found the OrCam to give its results for reading printed text to be a lot faster, but perhaps that also has a lot to do with the quality of the internet here. On a related subject, I feel sad because accessibility, like most other innovations, are starting to focus more on advancing tech catered to users in developed countries over non-developed countries at an increasingly high rate, leading to more discontinued or unsuccessful products making their way in small numbers to our market, where they are sold to people at higher prices, who in most cases don't really know any better. Just the nature of maximising profit, though. Still sad. Random contacts are still sending me the ads featuring Lionel Messi saying, Hey, Sujay, saw this ad. This should help you see. Have you heard of this? Sigh. Thanks for reading this. Keep up the good work. Sujay from Kenya. Sujay, thank you for that email. And I think that brings, you know, such a a fascinating perspective to this conversation around specialist versus mainstream to, to that particular aspect. But also, as you say, because it goes beyond... The, the technology itself and actually more about the, the availability of devices and also the safety using them uh, and also just, you know, let's just think of internet. You know, we, we're kind of blessed. It, you know, I sit here in the UK with my gigabit internet connection and don't really think about it very much. Sometimes I get a bit, you know, oh, that's not uploading as fast as I'd like it to, to <laughs> upload. And then you think, yeah, but there's other countries or other parts of the world where, you know, basic internet is, is you know. A luxury. A, beyond a luxury mm-hmm. in some cases. Yeah. So, yeah, that is such an interesting perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And look, we've never said the the Orcam products are, you know, not of any worth, but absolutely are. And you give a, a perfect example of why they are. Um, the, the internet always needing to be available for so many devices is an issue. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I just wish Orcam would be a little bit vocal and give us a little bit of feedback. So I won't say too much, but what because there's nothing much to say to be honest. Other than I did get a little bit of contact the other day, oh. but it felt a, it felt a bit like, if I'm honest, it felt a little bit like someone opened the door after I've been knocking it for seven years, uh, and then just slammed it back in my face again. Uh, so I didn't get any other than a hello or a goodbye. I got nothing really other than just a we acknowledge that you've said hello and been knocking the door for seven years. But that was kind of as far as it went. And I'd love to know more about this. Well, that's uh, a step you know, in the right direction. It's a start, but you know, I, I just, I, I do want, you know, because look, I'm with Suji here. If this works for you, and it makes it possible for you to access the kind of technology you need to access, then it should continue in some form. Um, now, Suji, I would love to know more about how you were able to fund that. Did you self-fund it? Did you get uh, funding for it? 
did, did a, a charity get involved? You know, you tell me. I don't know, because maybe you paid for it yourself. I don't know. But the point is, these are very expensive devices. So, you know, you talk about the cost of a smartphone and, you know, the smartphone being whipped out of your hand. But I would argue you could have six smartphones swiped out of your hand before you'd even reach the cost of an OrCam. So I just wonder what the the view on that is. You know, is it a case of, like you say, it's just it's just a, simply because people might not know what it is. So therefore, it's it's easier to walk around with. I don't. I just find well, there's some truth to that. I don't think that even matters, though. To be honest, I I I, I think the the fact of the matter is that um, people who've spent the money on a device like this deserve support. Firstly, yeah, and, that's true. and communication. Thank you, Suji. Brilliant email. Um, let's go to Darren, who wants to talk about fun enough this topic on on the cost of assistive tech. Hello, this is Darren from Bexley in Kent. I done. On a different topic this time, well, it's price of uh, assistive technology. Mm. Um, what's made me uh, think to put this message out is uh, last week you did a, a feature on the Angel Eyes reading machine. Uh, I since looked at the manual and looked at the tech spec and it's only got a 13 megapixel camera in there which leads me to believe and this is the same throughout all the assistive technology field a lot of these products as sean has said and it's been said many times are built with old hardware mm. in other words you pay premium prices and you don't get the uh premium uh, spec as it were yeah where you were talking about braille displays i agree with you i don't think it costs the price you pay to build a braille display i'm going to put my neck on the line and say it probably only costs about top whack two-thirds of the price that we are actually charged it could even be half to build a display if i'm wrong and I hope that somebody from one of these companies comes on and challenges me because <laughs> and tells me that I am wrong. But that's my suspicion. Top whack a third, more than likely half the cost. It could even be further still. It could be even a further the cost, but I think that's unlikely. But it's possible. Until next time, this is Darren saying bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate the call. Uh, 1877-803-4567 is the number to call. You can leave a voicemail. Or you can, of course, email us feedback at doubletaponair.com and uh, Laura reads out our emails for us. You know, I, I kind of wonder if there's another way we need to look at this because I, I think we've, we've kind of gotten to the point where people will say, those who are on the side of specialists, and what I mean by that is that the side of you know, look, there are devices we need to have because people do not go on with smartphones. So for that reason, these other products need to exist. Yes. I, I'm not I'm not really on the argument of, well, I just don't want a smartphone, so therefore I want something specialist, because I think that is a road to oblivion, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, we need I think to that, adapt or die. I, I agree. I th exactly. I think we ha if, if, you, if you're just doing it because you don't want to, then you're making that choice. Yeah. But I, I think you're kind of on a fool's errand. Because that equipment's never going to last that long on that basis because no one will buy it. Simple as that, right? There's not going to be enough people to buy it, so it'll just fade away and die, and then you're going to be left with nothing. Why not upskill yourself now and have the abilities to use the technology, like a smartphone, to do all the things you want to do and more, and you know, continue to do that? I mean, you buy a smartphone today, you'll get five years, six, seven years out of it potentially. I mean, I know people buy every year, but most people don't. Yeah. Most people have the same phone for five years, six years. And that's fine. Some go longer than that. Even better, right? But the point is, it doesn't matter how long you have the phone, to make it for 20 years. The point is you're going to get so much out of it. The reason you're keeping it for 20 years is because you can do so much with it and you can continue to do so much with it. But as a single-use device, for a single purpose, I mean, that's all it can do. Right? So, you know, there's only going to be so many updates, then you're going to have to update it again, and then you're going to buy another one, and then the question's going to be, you know, will it be around in 10 years' time? Will there be a Victor Reader Stream 4? I don't know. 
And as we've talked about before, and some listeners have got in touch, if something breaks, you know, or breaks down on your device, can you get it fixed easy? I mean, there's, it's, it's a specialist device with not a huge market and no one else is going to know how it works. So you are locking yourself down. And going back to the email, uh, the voicemail there, I think absolutely, I would be surprised if it, the devices themselves actually cost a third. Um, how much does a, a smartphone cost, you know, to actually build? We've sort of all seen the tear down, downs and the prices and, and yet they're selling it for $1,000 when it only costs $200 to, to build. It's right. exactly the same. But manufacturer cost isn't the only thing in the game here. We do need to take into account, you know, the running costs of the company, the R&D, the molding, the injections, manufacturer costs from that point of view. Um, you know, this has got to be sustainable as a business and they need to make a profit. So I, I'm totally with you, but I don't think we can just look at the manufacturing cost and say, well, it only costs this much, so it should cost, you know, uh, uh, only a bit over that for profit. I think it's more complicated to that for a business to be sustainable. And this is why I think we need to, um, we think a little bit outside the box here. You know, negative Julian shouted at me once on here, more than once, but on one particular occasion <laughs> for not thinking outside the box because I should have been thinking about headbands or something. Um, That's why we love him. Exactly. That's right. And, you know, I, of course, but it, it does make me wonder if there's an opportunity to think outside the box in terms of the way we control the devices. You know, I speak for myself, but, you know, since the hand issue that I've been having with the Tremor, it has had an impact on my ability to use the touchscreen as well as I used to. Double tapping is quite difficult. Uh, you know, doing those gestures is getting more difficult. So, you know, I've decided to use a Bluetooth keyboard. But there are some times I think it would be so much easier if I had something else that was even more portable, something I could use with one hand, for example, the good hand, you know, to be able to do what I needed to do. Now, we know there's voice control in there. We know they've just brought eye tracking to it. We know that they have uh, switch control and all of that. But I think there's an opportunity to go further. Almost let's Hable won this a little bit. So let's think about alternative input devices for the smartphone. Other ways to use the smartphone, some kind of overlay device that turns it into a tactile device, you know, with physical buttons on it that, you know, sits on top of the screen that interacts via Bluetooth. I don't know. But the point is, think of different products. Think of different ways different people could access the device using perhaps those traditional approaches that's, that uh, specialist technology has adopted. And if you did that, you'll encourage more people over to the smartphone and you just give them a, a choice of input methods, a different way to do it. Now, there are a lot of different ways to do it right now. The Sense Player, for example, has the ability to control. I haven't tried it, but it has the ability to control the phone. Um, oh, yeah, I'm immediately, that's right. Yeah. I'm immediately thinking about the Revo 2 that, that Greg in Pennsylvania tells me about regularly, yeah. which I haven't had hands on with, but again, I hear great things about it. I think you can even take calls with it as well. It acts like almost like a little handheld That's right. you know, phone. You can a speaker phone. Um you've got the Hable One. You've got I'm trying to think what Orbit have got on this line. I suppose any Braille display really that's a small portable Braille display would classify. The Braille but, you know, writer. Yeah, but, but again, you could with Braille screen input now, someone could develop a very small Braille display that could sit next to or at the bottom of your smartphone. You have your phone lying on the desk, which you use with Braille screen input, mm -hmm. and you use a little Braille display, which I would imagine would be a lot cheaper. You know, a little 20 cell display or something that could just sit there. You know, you could throw it into your 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 bag, take it with you wherever you go. You know, come with a nice fold-up case. Oh, yeah, think of it like absolutely. a Logitech keys to go keyboard, you know, that kind of thing. I just think there's other ways to think about it because we're going to have to make a move towards this kind of device. I'm sorry, but we are. Well, isn't as, the as, Braille Note Touch, um, you know, the first time that was released, God, that's a while ago now, based on an Android tablet. Wasn't that a that nod was, towards that? That was, a, that was a nod towards it. It was a nod towards whether it was a right approach, I don't know. Um, I don't know if Android was the right way to go with that one. Um, oh, it and, should have uh, been an iPad, Stephen. No, Scott. I don't. No, I don't. No, I no. Actually, no, I don't. I think it should have been a, a Windows PC in there. Um, oh, very interesting. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think yeah, it yeah. should have been something because bear in mind, a lot of these are going to education purposes, and a lot of kids who are going through school are going to have to learn how to use Windows. Learning how to use Android, an Android tablet in the classroom, how useful is that going to be in the real world? 
how many businesses use Android tablets every day in their job? Yeah, yeah. I'll say not many. Yeah, no, I'm with there you, you on that. There you go, I said it. Yeah. Okay. And that goes for iPads as well. Yes, iPads are great, but, you know, iPhone's a different thing. But I think when it comes to uh, computing and education, I would say I'd, I'd, I would have gone down the Windows route. So, And that's why the Optima Braille laptop is, is sounding so good, because it's kind of all those things in one. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. So anyway, I, I just I think there's there's another way to look at this. You know, I just think there's another way to It's the same old, to, uh, old problem we come back to is a small market. That's what we keep coming back to, and it's really hard to argue against that. If someone brought out a case with a Braille display built, built in for your iPhone, I mean, in, with the uh, BSI in I, iOS 18, I mean, that could be absolutely amazing, right? But how many are there? And the Hable sell? one's one half of that story, right? The Hable one is is essentially the keyboard input method. Which a lot of people do like yes. because they, they may not, I mean, like me, I might struggle with the Braille screen input to, to be Absolutely. able to do those gestures. You're right. So for the Hable one, much better. And I think they, they're really on to something. Now, it's interesting. Someone asked me, I don't know if we played the email or we're yet to play the email. I don't know where we are with our emails, but, you know, I know there's so many that come in. But I had one that came through, which was asking what whatever happened to the Hable 2 that was kind of pre-announced, if you like, by accident, I think, by uh, Frank Van Wilson from... Uh, uh, Hable, who came on uh, at the start of the year yeah. onto the show to, to talk about, um, well, he was celebrating World Braille Day with us, and he kind of announced that this product was was in development. No <laughs> news of that yet. I don't think he announced will... it. I think he just said we are oh, working well, he on things. Well, you, he, he announced you it. You wouldn't I, leave I, him alone. And I wouldn't let him go until he told me more, which was not, he didn't really tell us anything. But we're, we're nearly at the end of the, well, not quite, but we're nearly at the end of the year. So where are we with that? We're going to be checking in with him soon. I want to know where we're at with all of that. Yes. But, um, yeah, because that I think has the potential to go further, and I think they are going to go further with that this year. That was the impression I got. They've got to from that conversation with yeah. the improvements to BSI on the iPhone. They they, they need to. Um, I love your emails, guys, because honestly, emails, voicemails, I love them because they just they spark off so many interesting conversations, and uh, it's great to hear what you've got to say. Uh, Mary Hart's been in touch about NLS readers, the National Library Service in the states. Um, let's see what she's got to say. Hi, Stephen, Sean, and thank you, Laura, for reading my emails. Stephen, you mentioned the NLS reader the other day, and I've given up on using mine until they figure out how to make it function properly. I've had to return it more times than I've owned it. I know someone who said they couldn't return it because they've returned it too many times. My state had the ZoomMax model, and I get many emails from a groups.io that was created for people to get help. It's not all bad. I did learn I can read Braille with pins better than I can paper dots, so I'm grateful to NLS for all they had tried to supply. Now I need to find a braille display that actually functions. I want to get one of the QWERTY keyboards, but I can't justify $2,600 for the Mantis Q40. Has anyone used the new Orbit Research Q40, as I can't seem to find any information or reviews on it? Mary Hart. Uh, Mary, thank you for that. Um, that's kind of sad that you're having those issues with the NLS reader, because that that's a chameleon 20, if I'm right, isn't it? The Which is actually a humanware device which has been put together in, in collaboration with American Printing House for the Blind. Oh, right. Over here, it would be the, the brilliant, I think, 20, isn't it? Um, honestly, I don't know. But like a cut-down version. Yes, I know it's a... a, a <laughs> we're almost afraid to use the word value or affordable version. Yeah, but, yeah I know. I, I know, mean, I know. exactly. In this scheme, then obviously that's what it's got to be. And to be honest, I mean, we heard the same thing when the Orbit Reader was first released, and that was given out in a few schemes as well. We heard the same thing of you know, yeah. build quality issues and some pins and cells being broken. So it doesn't surprise me if they ramped up production for this, that you have these problems. But still, it's very annoying if you keep getting the same problems or, you know, repeated problems with it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as for the QWERTY ones, you're right. It's a lot of money for the Mantis and a lot of people just cannot afford that. Uh, the um, the Orbits, let me get this right, Orbits Q20. Is it, It's not called the Orbit Reader, is it? The Orbit QWERTY? Q, I can't remember. No, I can't remember. I just is. call it the Q20. So the Q20 know. and the Q40, yeah. So you have 20-cell display with a QWERTY keyboard or a 40-cell display with a QWERTY keyboard. And they're really nice. Um, from what I hear, the keyboards are really nice, like the MX keys, which I was like, hello, what? really? Um, kind of got those concave keys a little bit on there. So are these like, released oh, now? Um, so the thing with Orbit is I never really know what's going on. <laughs> Um, I know that there are some new distributors that are coming through. They're, they've, they've announced certain new distributors in some parts of the world. 
uh, which is good news. But I haven't seen any product yet making its way through. Now, I have been in touch with Orbit and I have asked them, please, can you send me something? Send me some of these to have a look at because I'd love to get hands on with these for you so I can tell you what I think. But they have to send them to me because with the best will in the world, it's too expensive to go out and buy. Yes. You just can't be constantly buying these things. So, you know, it, it's, I've got the Mantis and I feel what a great comparison to put it up against and see oh, what it's like. absolutely, yes. There will be a lot of similarities. There are a lot of similarities, but the price is different. And I want to know what the difference feels like. What is the real world reality of that? What is that price difference? What does it mean? Um, Sorry. I mean, I, we can predict certain things, like, for example, the noise of the pins versus of the, the Mantis will have softer pins. I get that. Um, but, but you know, keyboards, reliability. And look, I'll, I'll say up front, I paid my money for my Mantis, so I can say this. Um, I, you know, I had an issue with mine. I had to send mine back, like within the first couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, one of the keys stopped working and they had to replace the keyboard. Now, that could be a one-off. It could be the only one that's ever happened to. I don't know. But, you know, the idea that it's more the more expensive it is means, therefore, the quality's higher. Uh, I don't know. Not anymore. Wow. I'm, I th- I look, I, look I, I, can, I, I should follow that up and probably say, in reality, you know, I saw someone the other day complaining their Pixel 9 Pro fell out of the pocket and basically turned into a foldable. Um, <laughs> yes. So, you know, quality is a problem across the board. I think there's a big issue with quality across the board with all products, not just exclusively Braille displays. The problem with a Braille display, of course, is with any Braille display is it's got its moving parts in there. So, you know, things can go wrong more easily. Yeah, yeah, but anything can go wrong. But this wasn't the, this wasn't the Braille display. This was the keyboard. Keyboard, so. yeah, which is slightly more concerning. Did you spill any, uh, you know? No, I didn't. Okay. No, I have to. Uh, no, oh. and you know what? I have it in my case because I am terrified. You do, yes. Do, do you remember I told you when I got it back? I, like, I only had it back like two days. And I had a can of Coke yes. sitting next to it that fell over. Other drinks are available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but who drinks uh, them? You do, and you do look it after it. it fell over. I will say. And it fell over. The can, thankfully, wasn't open. So Otherwise, lucky. That would have been a. I oh, think it's more uh, concerning. A big man did it ran away. I'm type say thing. This. I think it's more concerning that we aren't seeing lots of reviews of these devices. Where are they? Yeah, no one's no one's getting hands on as far as I can tell. Then Some people have seen them at events. Uh, no, exactly. That's right. Okay. Uh, they're not available yet, but uh, it feels like they should be right because we've been talking about them for so long. Yes. Where, where are they? Yes. So once they become available to us, we will definitely be talking about them here. I promise you, Mary. So keep listening. I'll let you know. Um, okay. Lots of you are interested in my Motorola G54. I'm going to be talking about uh, in a couple of weeks' time. A uh, G54 Motorola, which is a kind of budget range Android phone. Uh, Greg has some thoughts. I'm looking forward to Stephen's experiment with the Motorola phone. Someday I will have to replace my iPhone 6S, which I'm holding on to for the headphone jack and home button. And it still does everything I need it to do. Motorola, Asus and Sony all make Android phones with headphone jacks, with Motorola having several affordable options and Asus and Sony making some premium models. The question remaining unanswered is how accessible those particular renditions of Android are. It's also confusing to me about the variation of future OS upgrades that each model promises. Mm. I use the headphone jack every day. I will hate giving it up and will hold a grudge against Apple forever, even though I will probably decide to upgrade to a new iPhone once the AI dust settles. I absolutely need the Talking Tuner app every day. How does the Smart Vision phone hold up in comparison to the Motorola? I don't believe you've ever discussed the US courts finding Google guilty of being an illegal monopoly. Is that Apple fanboy bias? Regards, Greg in Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, I do love Greg. Um, we did talk yeah. about that, didn't we? Uh, I think we did mention it. But we didn't go way. into I, it in detail. I mean, it's, it's no. sort of beyond me to, to go into it in detail. But yes, I think we did discuss well, it. Well, without any facts or any information, I am in exactly the same point of view as I would be with uh, Apple. There you go. <laughs> Because I stand firm in this belief that I don't think one company can be a monopoly in that space. Not when you have, and look, I don't know the oh, details. You started one. him off, Greg. Well done. But but honestly, it's so ridiculous because you know it, it, there are choices out there. You can make the choice to have one or the other. Now, do I admit that Apple have a very delicious uh, ecosystem that I enjoy living in? Uh, yes, but I have to be honest. I'm very jealous of the Android people. I think they have great choices. Yes. Okay, there, I said let's it. leave it there. I'm not even going to go into what we talked about. Uh, anyway, yes, um, I'm more interested in 
the headphone jack and the home button and a 6S. Wow, you are old school, Greg. Um, why is it that, you, that you, you really don't want to let that go? I get it with the headphone jack to some degree, um, but the home button as well. I don't know. I, do I, you know I think we're coming back to the adapt or die. Yeah, well, look, I, hmm. I know okay. I'm being harsh, Greg. I do apologise. Well, look, I mean, <laughs> you are running out of choices, I suppose. I mean, realistically, the well, next iPhone are. SE is not going to have a uh, touch ID on there, I don't think. Um, wouldn't it be so funny? Here's just a random thought. I have no basis to say this other than, you know how there's a lot of, uh, we said it and other commentators are now saying as well, you know, oh, if that camera control button had just been touch ID. What if in the iPhone SE, there's also a camera control button that happens to be touch ID? Hmm. I'm just wondering Everyone if that's would be buying that, it. I think. That would be interesting though, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's not going to happen. That would kind of fall into line with Apple's kind of, you know, yeah, with Apple, you have to almost look at everything with your head tilted, like a like a dog looking at you and say biscuit. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you know, that's how you got to look at um, at all these things with Apple because it doesn't always make sense uh, how they do things. Doesn't the logic always almost isn't there a lot of the time? But um, obviously, they have a plan. But yes. it, it's it's interesting. No, I I do I, I think this is great because the one thing with this Motorola G fifty four is you've got the face well not not face ID I don't think you've got touch ID. Um, and you've got, uh, what else have we got? You've got the headphone jack, of course, and you've got the USB-C. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm going to do a proper review of that because uh, I haven't had as much time to spend with it in the last week than I would like to. So I, I want to spend more time on it and, and then we'll, we'll talk about it properly. I, I think the big question is, and this, is, this involves some research, <laughs> so forget it, um, but you're <laughs> right, around the software updates. This is where things get a bit more complicated with Android. Certain manufacturers have got certain access to certain operating systems or a certain amount or a certain allowance of, or they decide for themselves they're going to update to this and not update to that, or they'll update it later. And I don't know who drives all this, whether it's Motorola, whether it's the other companies, whether it's Google, but there does seem to be a disparity between the devices. The lower end phones will clearly get updates later. The higher end phones will get newer updates. It seems a little bit unfair, honestly. It seems a bit unfair to me. Um, but there must be reasons behind all this, if, uh, unless it's well, it just costs to a lot of money to higher phones. It costs a lot of money for software development. Simple as that. I know the core is being provided by Google in the form of stock Android, mm. but to make the changes that these companies decide to make to stock Android to make it their own. Yeah, we just don't make any. Well, I'm kind of in that camp of myself. Yeah, just leave it alone. It's fine. Yeah, just give us Android. You know, give us yeah. just give us Android on a phone. And if we, we can add things to it. That's the whole point, right? You can add download. Load, launchers and god knows what else so just do that yeah yeah that's that's okay we fixed uh, that right next negative julian's back <laughs> he's got a comment on uh also on the uh, motorola g54 hello Stephen. being deep in my latest bout of non-24 i was lying in mm. bed at 3 a.m when it occurred to me that you may not have realized that a budget device like the g54 is able to use the two finger double tap on the back of the phone to start apps and actions to set it up use settings gestures quick launch you were probably well aware of that, but I needed to get it off my chest. Good luck with looking pretty on video. <laughs> Regards, Negative Julian. Don't I look beautiful? Don't I? Don't I? Gorgeous, probably. Yeah, thank you. Who knows? Just don't use be my eyes. Um... Apparently yesterday's show, I was out of focus the whole time. So that tells oh, you what you? I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've and got... no, one, no one cares. No one cares. I've got a big rash on my face from wearing smart glasses all weekend. So uh, there you go. There's beautifulness. How do you get a rash on your eyebrows oh, I by wearing know. sunglasses. I, was I wear them every day. Oh, I don't. Maybe that's the thing. I'm, I need to wear sunglasses more. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, yes. The um, uh, the back tap feature, as it's known on iPhone. Mm. I know I'm annoying Julian just by saying that. <laughs> um, but of course... Oh, he kind of called it that as well, though. The quick launch feature on Android. Um, I love that feature. I sometimes set it off accidentally just by putting my phone down on the side. It will... I've got mine set to take a picture and send it to be my eyes. But um, it's very handy to have something like that. It's like a, a an action button, you know? It's just something for convenience. Have you tried that? Uh, no, of course I haven't. Okay. Are you kidding? All right. um, I didn't know it existed until Julian just mentioned it. Very so cool. there you go. I will definitely be checking that out. And again, that's the thing. You, you tend to get little surprises along the way with Android phones. Like there's, It almost feels like you're getting so much more for your money. You know, you're getting a really capable smartphone that has all the things that the iPhone ditched. And you go, this <laughs> yes. is actually pretty cool. Yes. And you yes. don't have to spend a lot of money on it. It's like, why am I not on this platform? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, 
I have. I am going to talk a little bit more. We're going to talk about talk back uh, in in the coming days because we have a, a special guest coming up from the uh, Blind Android Users Podcast, who, by the way, are also extremely helpful to us at the moment in solving some of our chapter issues. So thank you to them. Uh, we may have a solution to this coming down yes. the line. Uh, Sean and I have a meeting after the program. A meeting Earthed. to discuss this. Oh yes, you're getting homework, that's, boy. That's not the end of the show. It is. No way. Because it, that's it. Yes. Oh, I, I need another hour. I've barely got into my stride here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that is it for today. But thank you so much for uh, all your contributions. We'll get to more of those on uh, the next show. Also, uh, we have uh, some interesting news coming up of a new search tool that allows you to buy things online accessibly using the uh, stores that you know and love right. in the States. And coming this week to Canada, details on tomorrow's Double Tap. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.